I really don't like to dig too deep into that topic though because I don't want to glorify it to young women. Um, you know, when I was in that industry, it was just a different ball game. Um, it has become more mainstream now and it's more like a hangout in a lot of cities. And yeah, I mean, get your money. But always, I've always had a backup plan. Like the money that I made dancing and stuff, I used to finance my store, to, to put a down payment on my home, exactly. to buy my exactly. first beds, exactly. you know, things like that, um, to take classes, to travel to Europe. You know, I, I self enrichment. And, so. and, and you turn them into a positive experience. I mean, it's not, like I said, we would have to dig into the topic, but it wasn't a negative thing. You no, know, not, for me. To, exactly. not for me. But unfortunately, a lot of women in my industry I've seen, you know, get involved in drugs and, you know, just, it, it's, you have to have a very thick skin. That's why I say I don't ever want to endorse or condone it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's a worldwide, multi billion dollar industry um, that's still thriving. But I don't want to, you know, come on and say, oh, yeah, you should yes. No. Yeah, it works for me, but not everybody is it's strong enough. Yeah. Yeah. So. Gotcha. So once again, speaking of business, um, let's get into your new company. Well, not necessarily new, but your entertainment company, modeling company. Yes. Yeah. Le Jou. It's Le Jou, which Le means the game in okay. French. Nice. Which I thought was catchy because I love Paris. Um, yeah, so it's like pretty much an entertainment development company. I deal with actors and models. Okay. I offer runway classes, seminars. Um, I'm actually maybe thinking about doing a reality TV 101 seminar, like maybe every other Sunday. Um, looking at an office in Times Square right now. Um, and I just really want to work with certain, certain uh, people that are really serious about their craft. Not just taking a selfie on Instagram and I'm a model. No, right. that's not cutting it. I Instagram is them. not your agency. It's exactly, I get it. Yeah, but you know what? Some people have really come up off the gram. They have, you know what I'm saying? But you I'm can't use the gram as your portfolio. Exactly. And, you, know, eh, you can't walk into Wilhelmina with, here's my Instagram portfolio. Yeah, yeah and it's yeah. yeah, so you know, that's that's where I'm, I'm here to tell, you know, these, these uh, up and coming, you know, people that are going to get an issue. That's, you know, there's certain protocol. Right. You know, exactly. so. It's cool. It's all about development and, and doing things the right way and getting in the right doors and not boxing yourself just into one market either. Right, right. Nice, nice. Well, now that we've got that out the way, yes. that's actually fun. Because <laughs> you know, the people, the people want the tea. Of they course. They want the tea. So beloved hip hop. Once again, VH1's biggest reality show out today, like this book. Season five? Season five. Season five. So, how did it come about? Like, Mona Scott Young is a phenomenal producer. Awesome. She is doing her thing with the show. Like, how did that come about for you? Well, my best friend is DJ Khaled's fiance, and we've been friends for almost 10 years now. And I said, you know, I know she has a lot of, I have a lot of industry connections, but, you know, I knew she could maybe get me somewhere in the loop gotcha. with that show. I said, you know, I think I really would be a great fit for that show. You know, I'm a big fan. Right. I've watched a lot of the great characters that um, have come and gone, and I've you know, been friends with a few people on the show through the years, Joe Buttons and stuff. Um, I said, I don't really need to be on there. Like, I think I would bring a new flavor to the show. Totally, there's nobody like me hey, on that have. show. Or my dog. Hey, there we go. Mars Tippy. We're going to get on Mars Tippy. I know yeah, you're going to We'll get back to that in a minute. We'll get so I made a phone call, and she hooked me up with the lady that's my now manager. And three days later, she's like, get dressed. Uh, you got to be in Mona's office. And, uh, you know, I was like, fine. So I went so in there. Something like happened in no time. Yeah, blinged out with my dog and my you know, Versace shades and my ponytail and my fabulousness. And they loved me, you know. I was just being myself. And nice. Mona, let me tell you something, is such a phenomenal businesswoman and such a, just, if, if I had, if I could have a mentor or if I, you know, were in a position to, she would be it. She is just about her business. She's sharp. She's classy. And she's really earned her stripes in that industry. You know, and it shows. You know, every time I see her in any public appearance, like it definitely shows. Um, but it, it also speaks, you know, great volumes for you because I'm an avid watcher of the show. I'm sure everybody out there know Love and Hip Hop. Um, but following every season, so we're not too deep into the season just yet. Um, I think like four episodes. Yes, absolutely. You've done your so, homework. Trust me, I love the show. <laughs> So, for the, for the real tea. So, starting out the season, I saw Chrissy Monroe come on, and like you said, she came on as a boss, like a businesswoman, you're always wearing beautiful models, like at the hottest parties in the city, like just a very, very graceful, beautiful woman. Everything is cool. 
He said that one co-star gets some lunch. <laughs> so, you know I have to ask, like, Erica Miller, yes. like, is the beef real? Like, have you guys mended ties in any way, or is it still bad blood? Like, what's going on? Okay, well, the beef is definitely real. We have about a 10 year history. I know her through uh, another friend of mine, acquaintance, mutual acquaintance in the industry from Miami. And you know, we've all taken care of Erica and you know, treated her very nice, like a you know, baby sister. And you know, you know, whatever. Um, just ever since she got on the show, she kind of just changed. She like got Hollywood and started talking, you know, down to people and just being very nasty, doing a lot of dishonest, grimy things. For instance, one of the things that they didn't talk about on the show, my manager and I had hooked up a studio session with Chain, my boyfriend, and her body. They're very close. They worked together for years in Murder Inc. and stuff. And you know, um, she was so happy. We had her on a conference call, my manager and I, and everything, set it up, blah, blah, blah. Earth was only doing it on the strength of us. You know, Chain, my manager. A week later, we get a call from her. How this bitch get my number? How did this get my number? She tried to go around our back and cut our throat and just go directly to him. Wow. So needless to say, it never happened. You just cut your own throat. Don't try to play. Wow. So that, you know, that, and then, you know, yeah, just, you know, why? why? There's no need for the grimy shit. Um, that, you know, stealing money out of my bag, once at the nail salon, just a lot of different little incidents. So, like, everything that's this, this portrayed on the show, like, this is oh, actually real. Real, like, actually but, you know, we can't just come into a scene and I'm going to, like, break down 20 things that this bitch has done. Exactly. And, exactly. yes, you know, and there was like, well, why would you expose this girl as an escort? I want the one that exposed her as an escort. There's, there's blogs from 2013 from different agencies in Los Angeles exposing her way before I even stepped foot on Love and Hip Hop. I'm just the face that actually came, bitch, I'm another person that got you some bread from your past before you was, you know, on Love and Hip Hop when you were sleeping on my couch, talking a bunch of shit, telling people sob stories, how your baby daddy was beating your ass, which I doubt was even true, 